For the third day of Polytimus, we are going to be talking about why Illinois and Ohio are extremely gerrymandered. We will also be looking at the maps of Nevada, Oklahoma, and Massachusetts. Hello everybody, welcome back to a brand new video for Polytimus. Today we are discussing some of the brand new states that we haven't talked about their new redistricted maps since the last time I made a video. So we're going to talk about Nevada, Oklahoma, Illinois, Iowa, Ohio, sorry, and Massachusetts. So we got a little bit of states to talk about. So let's just start off with my home state. In case you guys don't know, I am from Nevada. So I am very familiar with, you know, Nevada <laughs> politics. And so this is, this is a good map. And I'm going to tell you right now, this is definitely not gerrymandered at all. This map is a gerrymandered. You take a look at the old map. I mean, the second district was R plus 16, R plus 1, Nevada's fourth, and now you can see it's D plus 5. But look at Dinatitis's district. D plus 22, D plus 4. She, that district has been safe for years. Titus is like one of the most prominent Nevada Democrats that we basically have in the state when it comes to politics, basically. She's been in, in politics as a Democrat for a while and now she has a very solid chance at losing re-election. I mean, if you think about it, D plus 4, D plus 2, and D plus 5. Those are still very competitive seats. I mean, th the 4th district in Nevada is just barely a lean district. And this district, the 2nd district, Mark Amaday's district, it's basically safe. I mean, it's two away from being safe. I, I'm just, I am shocked that this was signed into law now. Did Sisolak do this to try and win votes to say that he didn't gerrymander? Probably. That's that's what I'm thinking, because there's no way he would sign this into law. But he did. On November 16th, he signed this into law, um, which shocked me. I didn't think that we would see this type of map. As a matter of fact, there were only a few plans. This was a first Democrat plan. Um, basically the exact same thing. It just didn't work out. I guess they just wanted this area a little bit. I don't even understand why, to be honest. Here was a Republican plan. I mean, you could just tell it's extremely gerrymandered in favor of Republicans. I mean, look at this. It just, like, swoops the Summerlin area, you know, which is more wealthy people live there. I mean, they tried, but, I mean, it didn't go through. It was tabled, but this is the real plan. Where's the real map? Let's go back to the real map. Boom. There it is. That is the real map and it is not gerrymandered at all. So good job, Nevada. So next up, we're going to talk about Oklahoma, where the winds come sweeping down the plain. That, that was good, right? So these lines are drawn a little bit weird, um, but I mean, there's no real difference. I mean, yeah, you can see a significant difference in the fifth district, Stephanie Bice's district, I'm assuming. It's now an R plus 24 and you can see it used to be an R plus 11. So you could just tell the difference. I mean, this one right here is just gerrymandered. You could just see, look at the way the line is drawn just to get Oklahoma City and then to get a little bit of rural Oklahoma just so that, it, I mean, all Oklahoma, I think, is the only county in the state in the entire nation, sorry, who had all the counties go red in the 2020 presidential election. So, I mean, it is a safe red state, but you can just tell that they try to grab some outside areas in Oklahoma City to try to make it more safe red and then in Tulsa too a little bit you can see like just in the old map and you can see how they shrink it in the new map they still get it to a point where it is safe red and all these districts are safe red I mean I don't really see a way how you could call it gerrymandering because I mean Democrats truly don't have a chance in this state so yeah that's Oklahoma I want to skip over Illinois and Ohio just because those are two extremely gerrymandered states that we will get into shortly but basically, Massachusetts is o is Democrats Oklahoma. Everything is blue. It's going to be hard to switch it red anytime soon. There, I mean, is there a way to make it red? Yes. But all the counties in Massachusetts went blue in the 2020 presidential election. I mean, so you could just see. I mean, there's no real difference in the lines. You could just see there's a little bit changes here and there, but... Nothing really significant that there is to comment on at this time. But here we go. Ohio and Illinois. So in case you guys didn't know, Princeton has this gerrymandering project right here. And um, we're going to be looking at the gerrymandering project for Illinois. So let's check out the final. Look at this. F. 
This map is extreme Lee Jamander. Now let's take a look at it on 538. You can just see, look how weirdly drawn that line is. Look how weirdly drawn that line is. Look how, what? Why is everything just surrounding this area for Rodney Davis? And then that, it's weird. These lines are weird, all right? First thing I want to talk about is Adam Kinzinger. So he is it now in this area of the 16th district against a very Republic, Trump Republican guy named Dan LaHood which is why he decided not to run for re-election because realistically he has no shot. Because look at this line. I mean, they are just getting these Republican areas to make this safe Republican. You can see it right here too. Look, they just avoid Springfield. They just completely avoid Springfield, just completely. And they just draw these weird, funky lines. And it, it looks weird, but Ronnie Davis... He's secure for election. He can run. He can run for the next ten years and be safe. And you know what? So can um, so can either Mike Bost or Mary Miller. But look, we got two. Oh wait, I'm sorry. That's not open. But I mean, you can just see this thing is basically lean Democrats. Cherry Bustos. <sighs> I mean, this this map is extremely gerrymandered. Now, do you expect a lot of districts in Chicago? Of course, Chicago is basically most if not like 70% of Illinois' population. Don't quote me on that exactly, but I mean, there's a ton of districts in this Illinois area, but you can just see that they are counting out Republicans. And if you look at the old map, look at it. You can just see the difference. And they're like, oh, well, I don't want that to be R plus three anymore. So boom, let me just expand this all the way over here. And, the, and another issue is they lost a district. So it makes it even harder for Republicans. Like, that's another advantage, disadvantage that they have on top of them. I mean, the partisan fairness, look, F, competitiveness, F, geographic features, F, everything, F, F, F. I mean, the, the Illinois is just all kinds of messed up, according to the Princeton Gerrymandering Project, when it comes specifically to gerrymandering. So, I mean, that's all I got to say about Illinois. So that just puts it on top of extremely gerrymandered states. So you got Illinois, gerrymandered. North Carolina, gerrymandered. Texas, gerrymandered. Oregon, gerrymandered. And you could argue Indiana is a little bit gerrymandered. Same with Oklahoma, maybe a little bit. But here is a state that's actually gerrymandered too. So let's check out um, Ohio on the Princeton gerrymandering project. Here we go. Partisan fairness, F. Competitiveness, a C. And geographic features, a C. So that's better than Illinois. But look, the partisan fairness is an F, and it's a significant Republican advantage. Now let's check out the map on 538, and you can just see it. Just look at it. And then you look at the old map. I mean, the old map wasn't good either, but <laughs> you can see, like, yeah, they definitely drew it in a way that it is going to be easy for Republicans to succeed. And I mean, they did just that. Look, Marcy Captur's district. She's an incumbent. Look at it. D plus 16. Now, they took this little small chunk right here. All of this was Ohio's 9th district. And then they basically cut that out, gave it to Robert Latta, and then they spread this part out down all the way over here. So, um, she's screwed. She's not winning. I mean, she has a chance, but most likely with our political climate, the way that it is right now, shifting more towards Republicans... It's a little bit arguable. Now, um, Dayton, uh, Michael Turner, you could just see, I mean, they cut out this rural part. It's just all of this is all types of crazy. The fact that Ohio is a kind of competitive seat race, sorry, and there's only three Democrat, di I mean, sorry, two Democrat districts. I mean, that's just absurd. That is just absurd. Now, there's two competitive districts, but guess what? They're both held by Republicans. And the other Democrat district is now a Republican district. So Chantel Brown, she's safe. And so is Joyce Beatty. But does it really matter? No. This play map is extremely gerrymandered. And to be honest, there's nothing you can really do about it. Yes, the courts challenged it. But as we mentioned earlier, like when they were when we talked about North Carolina having a court argument, well, guess what? It failed. So this is the map. This is the map. The gerrymandering thing, whatever the whatever the lawsuit was, it failed. So this is the map for North Carolina. You can't avoid it. And now that's the maps that we're dealing with.
So there you go. That is the end of today's episode of Polytimus. Thank you so much for watching. And stay tuned for tomorrow because every day throughout the month of December or until Christmas, there will be a new YouTube video out. So stay tuned for that. See you guys next time.